All right, so now we're going to look at key issue three. We're going to take a look at why site factors are important with industry. And the key issue basically focuses on three important factors, labor, land, and capital. And these are important because, of course, you're going to have to have workers. So your, your plant has to be where you have workers. You need the land, and a lot of times that comes down to price. And finally, you need investors. You've got to be able to have the money. So let's go ahead and look at each one of these more in depth. All right, so labor is going to be the first thing we look at, and that's the most important of all three factors. One of the things the section focuses on is something called labor-intensive jobs or labor-intensive employment. This means that employee pay is the highest percentage of a company's expenses. So when they're paying their bills, labor uh, is the most expensive thing they got to pay for. In core countries or MDCs, we're talking about $20 an hour in benefits. In the periphery or LDCs, we're looking at about $5 an hour with little to no benefits. So that also explains why a lot of companies will move overseas to countries where they can pay less. Now, to clarify something, this is not the same as a high wage industry. When we're talking about labor intensive, what that means it's the percent of cost that is really um, affecting a company. High wage equals the salary, meaning those people just make a lot of money. So we're talking about doctors, engineers, and attorneys. So let's look a little bit more at what we're talking about with labor-intensive industry. All right, so we're going to take a look at textiles and how that applies to labor-intensive uh, jobs. A textile, when we're talking about this, is cloth, anything like that, especially woven fabric. And this is generally made by low, less skilled, lower cost workers. And that's why a lot of these jobs fall to LDCs. For example, China makes about two thirds of the world's cotton thread. Now that cotton thread is sent somewhere else to be manufactured in the clothing, but they make about two thirds. 93% of fabric in general is made in LDCs. 60% is made in China and India makes 30%. So 90% of all the fabric made is done in China and India. And then that fabric is sent out and eventually converted into clothes or sheets or curtains or whatever else you're using fabric for. Now, even though fabric is made in an LDC, much of it is assembled in an MDC. So what we mean by this is that China is making the thread. Then India and China is making it into a cloth. That cloth on big sheets of uh, cloth is being sent to places like America or England and it's being converted into the shirts. So we are really only assembling it where the components is being made somewhere else. And that's what we mean by this labor intensive is that the menial type labor work is being done in the LDC. And because there's not a lot of profit margin in that, the companies have to spend a lot in labor. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about land because that's very important when we're deciding where to put a factory. Now, cities are great to put a factory. I mean, you've got tons of workers. You're going to have a market there because you've got tons of people living there. And then you're going to generally have lots of capital because people with money generally live or are around the city. But there's a major problem. Land in city is very expensive. I mean, when we talk about New York, there's a reason why they have very tall skyscrapers and they have to build up. The land is too expensive. And what we found is that you want a one-story building generally for a factory. In New York 100 years ago, they were trying two and three-story buildings and it just was not very effective. It was hard to move product from the third floor down. So one-story buildings are the best. And what that means is you're going to have to move to rural areas. But that takes you away from the market where your buyers are. But rural areas have cheap land. So what really helps, especially at the turn of last century going into the 1900s, is railroads start getting built everywhere across America. That starts allowing factories to move from cities into rural areas. Then in the 1950s, we start building interstates. That allows factories to be able to move to rural areas. So we start seeing rural areas have more and more factories because they can be one story and spread out. Now another important locational factor is energy. It takes a lot of energy to make a car or heavy machinery or anything like that. So originally these factories had to be near our water source. Well, we moved on from that. Then they had to be near coal fields or even a forest so they could burn wood. But we were able to move on from that because now we have hydroelectric power. We have nuclear power. So when factories are still being built, if they need a lot of power, they still, even in, in modern times, 
have to look, can they move to a location that can generate enough energy? So that also comes into very important, uh, comes into play when we're talking about land and where a factory might move. All right, so now we're gonna talk about capital. Capital is all about money. And when factories want to expand or be built or produce other facilities, you need capital. So that means they gotta have investors. Well, when the book talks about in Michigan, we start seeing the rise of auto manufacturing there. That's because there were a lot of banks and other investors in that area willing to take a chance on helping the car industry, and it was very successful. Just like in Silicon Valley in California, there's a lot of banks and a lot of money out there, and people took a chance in the 1980s and started investing in the programming and computer companies. And it took off and really exceeded expectation. So you gotta have investors willing to spend money there. MDCs have that. MDCs have money that are willing, for, has money on people willing to invest. I mean, think about the TV show Shark Tank. These are really rich people who are willing to take a chance if they believe they're gonna get money back in the end. And that's why sometimes they reject people. They don't see it coming back. But they're still taking a chance because some of those products may not make it. LDCs don't have the funds. There aren't super rich people on the same level in LDCs. They don't have government agencies with the same kind of money. And because of that, LDCs don't see the investment in the factories. So that prevents them from lagging behind. Not only do they not maybe have resources, but when they do have resources, they don't have the money to have investments made to be able to produce these factories. 